Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by the station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Title: The General Saves a City, a true story of the courage, compassion, and understanding of an American general. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, we all share freedom, help share its defense. The motto is new, but the call it sounds is as old as the history of our country. Today, as we stand strong and alert against communism, the United States Army is calling for qualified young men and women to join the freedom team and become Army technical specialists. You will be trained in the latest techniques using the finest equipment, and you'll be building a rewarding career for yourself. For full information, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. The time is now. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly hailed production, The General Saves the City. German city of Heidelberg hugs the Neckar River not far from where it meets the Rhine. In the spring of 1945, Heidelberg lay smack in the path of the Allied advance, an advance preceded by tremendous artillery barrages and round-the-clock aerial bombardment. Heidelberg was one of the few cities of its size in Germany to remain intact and untouched in the face of such a devastating holocaust. That fact must be attributed to the actions of one American soldier and a few determined citizens of the doomed city. The soldier was Major General William A. Beiderlinden, who in that spring of victory was in command of the artillery brigade of the 44th Infantry Division, led by Major General William Dean. This raid, sir, Mannheim will be ours by morning. Yeah, there's little doubt of it, Colonel. And then on to Heidelberg. Have you ever been there, Colonel? No, sir. This will be my first visit. Well, it's a very old and a very beautiful city. Its university dates back to the 14th century. One of its bridges is older than that. Gerthy called it the most beautiful bridge built by man. It's a city crammed full of the best of the past. Sir, we're fighting a war. Colonel, I happen to be vaguely aware of that fact. But to save this symbol of peacetime culture, to keep our guns from it... But our advance, how can you expect to continue our advance? Colonel, would you have the sergeant get my jeep? I'll be at General Dean's headquarters should you need me. You think you can get him to surrender as an open city? Well, I don't know. But with your permission, I'd like to try. You have that, Bill. You do as you think best. Just remember, it can't in any way slow our advance. We're spearheading. We don't let up on them for a minute. When we take Mannheim, I'll try to get word through to the Heidelberg authorities. I don't think you'll have much luck, even if you do. Well, it's worth that old school try to me. I don't want to discourage you, Bill, but... I think you ought to listen to something. Lieutenant, let's have that Superman in here again. Well, who have you got? Adolf Hitler? His brother, Sam. Oh. General Beidelinden, this is SS Major Brunner von Hauptmann. Major von Hauptmann, General Beidelinden is in charge of my division artillery. He'd like to spare Heidelberg because of its age and beauty, its past culture. How do you feel about that? We shall never surrender. Every last man, woman, and child will fight and die for the glory of the Fuhrer. If the Burgermaster of Heidelberg tries to negotiate with you, he will be shot. You think you have beaten us? 
You think you because you have taken a few of our cities? All right, that will do, Major. That we shall surrender? That's enough, Major. We shall make a stand and turn defeat into victory. Lieutenant, take him back to his cage. We will crush you and fling you back into the sea. Every man will be... You see what I mean, Bill? Sure, I know, but they're not all like that. No, but those that are will see that the others do as they're told or else. I'd still like to give it a fling. All right, Bill, go ahead. But remember, you'll have to work fast. On the 28th of March, Mannheim, badly battered, without food or water, surrendered. Almost before the last shot had been fired, Bill Beidelinden made his way into the city and with the aid of an interpreter, found a messenger willing to carry the word to Heidelberg. He must tell the authorities, whoever's in charge there, that Heidelberg can only be saved if there's no resistance. Sie müssen den Behörden sagen, dass Heidelberg nur gerettet werden kann, wenn kein Widerstand geleistet wird. Jawohl. Tell them the time is vitally important. I must have an immediate answer. Zeit ist von äußerster Wichtigkeit. Wir müssen Ihre Antwort sofort haben. And, uh, oh yes, see that he gets a jeep. Colonel Hubert Neeson on that fateful day was commandant of Heidelberg's hospitals, which held more than 21,000 wounded German soldiers. Fortunately, the messenger sent by Beidelinden got through to Heidelberg, and even more fortunately, he brought his news to Colonel Neeson. So they would spare the city. Yes, sir. The American general said there was need for haste. If we fight, we die like Mannheim, like all the rest. And for what? If I may be so bold, Herr Oberst, for nothing. Yes, I know, I know. Well, there's only one thing to do. Go see Ninehouse, the Bürgermeister. To save Heidelberg. Ah, that would be. Ah, what's the use in talking about it? You would rather die here? Amidst the ruins, Herr Neinhaus. Don't take me for a complete fool, Herr Obers. I'm the Bürgermeister, the mayor. <laughs> what does that mean? It means if you are really the Bürgermeister and want to do what you can to save this city, you'll pick up that phone and call army headquarters. You'll tell them of the American offer, and you'll point out the Americans won't wait forever for an answer. Ziegler is the political gauleiter of this city. You know that as well as I. He's in charge. I take my orders from him. He has no power now. Do you think the people of Heidelberg will listen to what he has to say if you tell him what the Americans offer? He'll have me hung. A pity, sir. What do you think will happen to you otherwise? Heidelberg. Heidelberg, yeah. Rubble and ruin. A tombstone to beauty. It needn't be, Dr. Neinhaus. Operator, I want you to get me. They don't know where he is. There is no one else at headquarters who has such authority. They said, talk to Ziegler. Now, there's only one thing to do. Send the messenger back asking for further information. In that way, we can buy time, and the Americans will at least know that we are interested. And what do we do with this time we buy her, Oberst? You keep trying to get the army commander. I let it be known throughout the city that the Americans are willing to declare it open and not to harm or shell it if we surrender. We'd also better make a list of four or five of your most responsible people to act as negotiators. Oh. Wait till Ziegler hears of this. Never mind the Gestapo. Ziegler's hours are numbered. what we're doing here, watching up this road. Well, Andy, I tell you, I didn't have a chance to talk to the general about it, but maybe like the Sarge said, we just lie here and wait and see if anything comes down it. Well, that's what I mean. Ain't nothing gonna come down this road. Can I quote you? They all pull back across the river. They're just going up roads these days. Ain't going down them. You know, to be back in the sacks instead of wasting good sleeping time up here. Yeah, I don't like it at all lying out here looking up... Pull it. What you see? Nothing coming up the road, huh? Well, I'll be almost assuredly be. You'll be cold meat if you don't shut up. Hello, Americana! Hello, Americana! I 
Negotiate with responsible officer. Make sure he understands that. Yes, sir. Contact wird nur mit verantwortlichen Offizieren gemacht. They'll leave Heidelberg at exactly nine o'clock tomorrow night in a white ambulance, and they'll follow this route. Now he can take this map. The route's marked in red. Now point this out to him. Under no circumstances will there be further delay. If the negotiators are not at this headquarters by 21:45. I'll take it that our offer has been rejected. Well, what luck, Herr Bürgermeister? I reached General von Sprock. What did he say? He's willing to remove all troops and weapons from the hospital areas if it will prevent their being fired on. And uh, the rest of the city? He didn't say. I don't think he dare to. He wants you to call him. What about our trying to... Lighthouse! I'm going to have you hung! What is this incredible nonsense I hear about you negotiating with the Americans? It is they who have offered us the chance to negotiate. You stick to the evacuation of your wounded, Herr Oberst. General von Sprock, the new commandant, has agreed to remove all troops and weapons from the hospital areas. Oberst Nissen... General von Sprock is what? Such an agreement is out of the question. A new line of defense is to be formed along the Neckar. Heidelberg is to be defended to the last man, to the last woman. There is no new line of defense, and you know it. I'll have you shot for treason, Shut you... your face, you silly little puppet. You've had your last man shot. Try to stop us, and the people of Heidelberg will tear you to bits. You will see about that. I knew it. Now what? Forget him. He's who he's just bluffing. Who have you picked for negotiators? I thought Dr. Fritz Ernst of Heidelberg University would be good. Here is a list. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll round them up. Bring them here. Let's hope the messenger gets back soon. Shortly after the messenger again crossed the lines, all Heidelberg knew that the American army was willing to spare their beloved city. By seven o'clock the following evening, the negotiators, with Colonel Neeson to head them, had gathered at the city hall. The square before it was packed with a silent citizenry who waited tensely for the white ambulance to move on its mission across the old bridge to the American lines. Within the city hall, a crucial battle was in progress. As the representative of the army command, I have orders to deal only with hospital areas. And as the political head of this city, Lieutenant, I tell you, you will not deal with anyone. Without my permission. We are going to the American lines, and there's nothing you can do to stop us. I promise you, traitor, you are not. Take a look at those people out there, Ziegler. What do you think they'll do if I go out and tell them you won't let us discuss the American offer? Try to do that, and I'll shoot you before you can move five paces. You will shoot, you will hang, you will kill, you filthy pig. Well, I too have a gun, see? I have never shot anyone, but I will shoot you if you do not get out of here at once. Get out! Get out! Get out! I warn you, you won't get away with this! Climb in, Dr. Ernst. Lieutenant. I am going only to discuss the situation on hospitals. All right, but for heaven's sakes, let's go. Nearly nine. I get in, the rest of you gentlemen. Herr Oberst! Yes. Oberst Niesen! Herr Oberst, wait! I let him through. Uh, what's the matter, Herr Bürgermeister? The artillery commander, he just called to say Ziegler has ordered the old bridge to be blown up at nine o'clock. What about the Neuheim bridge? He's ordered it to be destroyed too. And the Ernst Waltz has already been blown up. Get out of my way. People of Heidelberg, your political gauleiter has ordered the old bridge to be blown up at the time we were to cross. If this happens, Heidelberg will be destroyed. The only way to save your city is to convince the artillery commander he must not obey Ziegler. Will you follow me? <laughs> Your 
You are listening to the proudly we hailed production of The General Saves the City. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Today, you young men of America have an excellent opportunity to learn a trade that will assure your future. The many fine technical schools of the United States Army are training men in such interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, and many others. You can become a qualified technician trained to do an important job and do it right. For full details about an exciting career, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's no obligation, so plan ahead. Face your tomorrow today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The General Saves a City. By 1900 hours, the time the Heidelberg delegation was to leave for the American lines, while Bill Dean's slugging 44th had driven forward to the outskirts of Nineheim, just across the river from Heidelberg. Here it lay momentarily, awaiting the signal to thrust forward and take the famous old city. And as that time drew near, General Bill Bidelinden paced his tent with growing concern. Well, another hour of this, we'll be able to walk into Neunheim without any trouble. Colonel, are you sure the outposts along Road G were fully appraised on the situation? Yes, sir. I've checked and rechecked. Uh, the rain will make a mess of the road. <laughs> What's left of it? So many things could go wrong. The messenger may never have gotten back. They... General Biderlinden speaking. Yes, yes, Captain, I can hear you. Go ahead. When? Well, is there any other way out? Are you sure they didn't get across before it went up? I see. All right, Captain, thank you. No, no, not yet. We'll let you know when. Bye. Bad news, sir? Right so. The Germans blew the last bridge across the Neckar. Well, I didn't think they'd listen to reason, sir. <laughs> Funny. I thought they would. Get me General Dean, please. Hello. Hello. This is Sugar Baker Dog calling. Mess, rain pouring down, black and a bear's hide in a cave. A grand night for dancing. Maybe you can tell me what we're doing out here miles ahead of everyone else. Why, boy, ain't you heard? We're winning a war. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what you all are saying. Can't tell me why we shouldn't be curled up in a nice dry cellar or a bunker, getting some sack time. Well, so I'll tell you. It's probably because you and me are the two most important dope feet in this entire army. Uh -huh. So General Dean, he says... I need those boys to get out there in front and make sure them Nazis don't run plumb away from us. Mm -hmm. Wish I'd gone to cook some baker school. Oh, you'd make a terrible cook, Andy. Well, now, that's no proper way to talk about a buddy. Hey, best we leave off talking altogether. Huh? Something come up the road. Nick, you got ears like a bird dog. Sounds like a truck. And remember, if it's white, we hold our fire. All batteries will concentrate their fire on... General Biderlinden speaking. What? Say it again. I can't hear you. Yes, that's right. Oh, Colonel, hold those orders. Yes, yes, go ahead. All right, bring them in and on the double. Right, bye. They're coming, General. Yes, they're coming, Colonel. Outpost on road G just picked them up. They must have crossed before the bridge was blown. <laughs> I take it you all speak English. We do, sir. Well, then let's all sit down and get to business. There's little time. As the representative of the German Army Command, I should like to speak. Go ahead. We have only come here at your request to see that the hospital areas of Heidelberg are not fired upon. Well, there must be some mistake. It's our understanding that you're here to offer the unconditional surrender of all Heidelberg, that you'll permit our entry into the city without resistance. We have no such authority. We cannot agree to your occupation of Heidelberg. 
All we want is a guarantee that the American Air Force will not attack our hospitals. We don't shoot at hospitals. Furthermore... Furthermore, we... nothing. It's to be regretted that the German army, which enjoys a reputation for brave fighting, cannot understand it has lost the war, and that it's useless to have more cities destroyed. We are of a different opinion. We have not lost the war, and we did not come here to discuss such matters. Look here. You're practical men. You want to save Heidelberg? Well, so do I. Now, let's try to work out an agreement that will do the business. Sir, you must forgive the lieutenant here. He does not speak for all of us. He does not speak for Heidelberg. We have... Can I listen, you will... Be still. I happen to be your superior in rank, if not in designation. I was appointed head of this delegation by the Bürgermeister, and as its head, I shall be entirely responsible for the negotiations that take place here. Now, sir, let us proceed. Within the drab tent across a battered old table, the victors and the vanquished faced each other. There were some on the side of the vanquished who could not understand why an American general of artillery was so anxious to save one of their cities. It was his job to destroy, not to preserve. It must be a trick. But in their hearts, they knew there was no need for a trick. They could bluster, they could shout, they could bluff. But even the arrogant young lieutenant knew they were beaten. And so, slowly, patiently, keeping a check rein on his temper, Bill Bidelinden made them see reason. Colonel Neeson, who had long been associated with the futility of war, finally brought the negotiations to a close. May I say, sir, I thank you for being so fair. Colonel, I'm interested in saving Heidelberg, not thanks. I pledge you my word that we shall do our best to get an agreement that no military resistance will be offered, and in return, you will spare our city from gunfire. That is correct. Now, let me point out again that speed is essential. I don't know how you plan to get back across the Neckar with all the bridges out, but we'll be moving on the city within the next few hours. If we meet with resistance, we'll know that you were unsuccessful. We shall do our best. Colonel, see that they're passed through our lines as quickly as possible. Goodbye, sir. And um, I hope we may meet again in Heidelberg. A colonel in undamaged Heidelberg. Strange to think of tomorrow. I know. Easter Sunday. When Colonel Neeson and his group reached Neunheim, it was just after midnight. Fire and smoke from the batter town cast their angry glow over the river and silent old Heidelberg lay darkly silhouetted against the night sky, waiting the dawn. A 16-year-old girl named Anne Tom had come to meet the colonel and his party, and it was she with her small boat who paddled them across the river back to the city. Herr Bürgermeister, Dr. Neinhaus, wake up. I am awake, Elvis. What's happened? What's the matter? The army command has left. The whole staff. Left? For where? I don't know. Tiegler. They must have listened to him. Where is that butcher? Gone, too. I suppose you were successful? Yes, yes, we were successful. They would spare the city, but now... And but... now it will come crashing down around us in fire and rocks. Could we... Pre... <sighs> Dr. Neinhaus here. What? The general? I mean, sir, sir I mean... I mean it, it, it's it's here, General von Spock. give me that Spruch. thing. Give me that thing. General von Spock, this is Oberst Niesen. You've got to listen to me, sir. I have just... What time is it? Uh, 0730, General. Our advanced column should be at Neuenheim by now. Strange not to hear guns. Let's hope it stays like that. Let's, let's hope it's a quiet Easter. Suppose they try to trap us, General. We're ready if they do, but I, I pray to God they don't. Wait. I'll take that, Colonel. General Biderlin is speaking. Being fired upon. Well, who is this? Where's it coming from? East of the city. Speak louder. Major, will you speak louder? I can't hear you. Is it heavy? 
All right, you know what to do. Clean them out. No, you will not. You will not fire upon Heidelberg. The agreement will be observed unless you're fired directly upon from the city. Is that clear? I don't care what anyone is saying. My orders are to hold all fire on the city. Right. Goodbye. Trouble, General? Well, I hope not. Some diehard elements east of Heidelberg opened up bizarre advance columns started across the pontoon bridge. We can handle that situation without having to break the agreement. I'll get Major Richardson on zero. The situation was well taken care of. And by late afternoon, American troops were flooding across the Neckar on pontoon bridges, thundering into the ancient city of culture and learning that had been saved for future generations. In the city, the streets were lined with joyous throngs of people, delighting in their hearts at the salvation of their beloved city. The churches of Heidelberg rang out their thanksgiving. Heidelberg, glorious Heidelberg, was saved. In May of 1951, Bill Beiderlinden's alma mater, Drury College, asked him back to receive the Alumni Association's Distinguished Service Award. It is the highest honor the alumni can bestow. The citation read, he recognized the international significance of the accumulated learning of the ages, the culture, refinement, and ideals of the centuries stored at the University of Heidelberg, and thus became the savior of Heidelberg. And so, proudly we hail General Bill Beiderlinden, who in the midst of war successfully brought about the saving of a great symbol of peace and of culture. <music> Young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many others. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you in civilian life. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>